All right, hello, hello. Welcome. This is lab eight. I'm gonna be talking about VO2 max predictions. I'm gonna make this super quick so you don't have to watch a super long video. Um, okay, so introduction, whatever methods, yeah. Uh, I don't think you can see John Cena again because my face is over John Cena. So unfortunately, you'll have to look at my face. <laughs> Um, okay, Oop, went too far. So we're gonna briefly talk about the cardiovascular system and the pulmonary system. So roles of it is to transport metabolic byproducts. So you got your carbon dioxide, your lactate, like glucose, things like that. Uh, second is to deliver oxygen to muscles, oxygen to tissues, not just muscles. And then carry heat, like, to your skin so it can be released. So those are some of the roles. Cardiac output. Cardiac output is usually symbolized with a Q right there, as you can see, and the units are liters per minute. And you can calculate cardiac output using heart rate and stroke volume, which is beats per minute, and then milliliters per beat for stroke volume. Um, at rest, your cardiac output, so how much blood is being pumped liters per minute um, is about five. So five liters per minute at rest, but at your max intensity, it can be about 30 liters per minute. This is dependent on um, your training. So um, at rest, you can see right here that most of your guts, so you, your guts and your kidneys, they get most of your blood flow um, and like the, the distribution uh, at rest. But during exercise, it shifts to uh, your, your muscles and your skin because your muscles are working and your skin needs to be able to release that heat that we were talking about before. So yes, um, okay. <laughs> so the relationship between cardiac output, heart rate and stroke volume. Um, and you can kind of guess this based off of the equation. So increase intensity, what happens when you increase your exercise intensity? You increase your stroke volume and your heart rate. So your heart rate goes up and your stroke volume goes up. So that means cardiac output will also go up. And max stroke volume right here occurs at about 40% of your VO2 max. So it, you get this little plateau right here at 40% of your VO2 max. So that basically means that um, the amount of blood that fills in your ventricles, it has a limit. So it, it hits that like that little, that plateau. Um, at moderate to high intensity, so increases in intensity, your stroke volume plateaus right there in this little chart, your heart rate still increases. So that's why your cardiac output will still increase. Uh, to your maximal exercise. Um, why does stroke volume plateau? Higher heart rate means that there's less time to fill your ventricles, so less blood is being ejected during the stroke volume. VO2. VO2 is basically your oxygen consumption. Um, the amount of oxygen that is being consumed by the body, by your tissues, per unit of time. So this can be seen as liters per minute or milliliters per kilograms per minute. So um, your absolute, you can compare to yourself while relative, you can compare to other people. So if you get, um, if you don't consider your weight, uh, you can only compare your VO2 to yourself while relative, you can compare your VO2 to other people, which is a benefit of doing relative VO2. Uh, VO2 max is basically the maximum uh, amount of oxygen your body can uptake uh, during intense exercise. So VO2 max is the point at which oxygen consumption does not increase with increasing intensity. You can see right here, intensity continues to increase, but it hits this plateau. So your body cannot consume more oxygen then this plateau, maximum oxygen consumption. Uh, so basically as oxygen 
uptake increases linearly, it then hits a plateau, like I was saying before. What can affect your VO2 max? So one, genetics. Two, training status. If you like are blessed with good genetics, you'll already have a, a pretty decent VO2 max, but then you can train and then increase your VO2 max doing some crazy aerobic training. Um, and yeah, we'll talk about reasons to stop later. VO2 max prediction. This is what we're talking about in this lab. So you can predict VO2 max without actually having to do a VO2 max test. And you can do it by using doing a submaximal test. So this is better for some populations. Um, pros, easier for the subject, easier for some populations. So at risk populations, those that have heart conditions and elderly, they may not want to be or may not be able to do a maximal exercise test that is not viable in some populations. So a submax test is required. It's cheaper. You don't need that fancy equipment to do the VO2 max test. Um, and it's considered a safer alternative. Cons, it's not very accurate. Not as accurate as the fancy equipment version, but it's, it's better than nothing. Um, so your VO2 max may be higher than what is predicted using this test. Okay, so how? How can you predict VO2 max based off of heart rate? So through research, through studies, uh, there's been a relationship that has been found between heart rate, oxygen consumption, and power. So you see this positive linear relationship. It looks pretty decent. Like that is a pretty solid relationship you got right there. Um, and it basically says that um, there's that positive linear relationship between heart rate and oxygen consumption from about 50% to max heart rate. Um, and it is, power is also associated with oxygen consumption. So higher the power output, the more oxygen is consumed to maintain that output. And okay, now we're at reasons to terminate a test. So first reason is they reach that predetermined endpoint and the predetermined endpoint is 85% of their heart rate max, a predicted heart rate max. So we'll use 220 minus their age. That's gonna be their predicted heart rate max. And then you multiply that by 0.85 and then you're gonna get 85% of their heart rate max, easy. Symptoms of exercise intolerance. So if they're experiencing any kind of pain or dizziness, that needs to be stopped right there. Um, if they have an ECG on them, if you uh, see any abnormal signs, any abnormal like things on the ECG, that needs to be stopped right there. Abnormal blood pressure response. So if their blood pressure like spikes or like completely dips, that needs to be stopped. Uh, unusual respiratory response. Uh, malfunctioning equipment, or if the person asks to stop. Those are all reasons to terminate a test. Uh, these are methods that you can just pause. I'm not gonna go through all of them because, yeah, <laughs> you can just pause and read it. So this is Marcelo, this is our participant. You can also pause this and read this. Um, I'm not gonna go through all this. So these are the calculations uh, that you're gonna need for this test. I'm also not gonna go very specific about this. If you have any specific questions, let me know, email me, I will be there for you. Um, for your Excel sheet, uh, do not include any values that are below 110 beats per minute. Anything above, that's what you include. So, you would include uh, these two. Uh, yeah, okay. I know best fit does not include any values with heart rate below. Yep, 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 yep. Predicted work rate, just trying to make sure um, I get everything that you guys need to know. For this graph, it's a little bit tricky, so I will allow you guys to draw it out. Um, if you can figure out how to do this on Excel, or figure out how to like manage the graph so you can make your graph look like this. Beautiful, love that for you. Um, but yeah, so 
right here, you want to start your line of best fit, what I was talking about before. So the 110 beats per minute, everything below that you don't include. So you start the line of best fit here at 110 beats per minute, you go up and then you go past all your little uh, things, your, your data points that you have right there. And you'll make these two lines, you'll go all the way up to your predicted heart rate max. So the 220 minus your age, you're gonna find that right here. You're gonna draw a line up here. And then when that line crosses this line right here, that's gonna be this, your work rate right here. And then you're gonna need that for your calculations. And make sure that this line is dotted. And yes. Okay, this is just the normalized values. You can pause if you want. It's on your lab manual, so uh, it's whatever. Um, these are not the discussion questions, and this is, don't worry about this. So yeah, uh, good luck. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, yeah. <laughs>